morning. My name is Troy McCall, and I'm the Chief Implementation Officer at the Reagan Udall Foundation. Uh, at Reagan Udall, my primary responsibility is to oversee the launch and the growth of the Innovation and in Medical Evidence Development and Surveillance Program, or IMEDS. Uh, just a quick housekeeping note uh, this morning. Uh, hopefully, if, for those of you who are connected via the web, you will have an opportunity at the conclusion to ask questions using the chat box uh, which, at least on my screen, is in the lower left-hand corner. Um, certainly, we want to start off this morning by thanking you very much for your interest in our work at Reagan Udall, and, and in particular, as it relates to the work that we're doing uh, in our ongoing activities associated with IMEDS. Over the last six months, we have made significant progress related to IMEDS, and today we will condense uh, quite a bit of that important information into a short period of time, but as I mentioned before, we will still leave time for questions at the conclusions uh, or at the conclusion of the formal presentation. We also do recognize, in, in looking at the list of uh, participants who have uh, taken the opportunity to join us today, uh, it, there are uh, varying degrees of knowledge of IMEDS and what it will do. Uh, but for those of you who are less familiar, we'll begin today's presentation by explaining what IMEDS is, how IMEDS is related to and importantly different from some of the similar initiatives you may have heard of like Mini Sentinel and OMOP, and then lastly, what benefits IMEDS will impart. If there is one message we'd like for you to remember today, it is uh, certainly that IMEDS is critical to completing the research which will help improve the ability of the FDA, regulated industry, and the general public more broadly to continue to rapidly evaluate the safety of marketed pharmaceutical products once introduced to the larger population upon FDA approval. Because of this, the general public can be confident that the FDA will have access to the most state-of-the-art tools and approaches that are available to demonstrate the continued safety of such products. Before we get started, uh, I think it's important to talk about exactly what methods research is and why it's so important. First, due to recent and dramatic technological advances, the healthcare community now has access to an unprecedented amount of electronic health data. Specifically, data from electronic health records and health insurance claims are now routinely captured across the entire healthcare system uh, in the U.S. and to a growing extent on a worldwide basis. Since these data were not intended to be used for research purposes and since these data continually evolve, it's really important to make sure that the methods and techniques that are being used for these data are continually developed and evaluated. So in the context of IMEDS, uh, methods research will involve the study and development of new and innovative analytical tools to extract previously inaccessible knowledge from enormous volumes of healthcare data. These tools and knowledge will then be used to develop a better understanding of what the data shows about the benefits, risks, and the outcomes of those marketed pharmaceutical products. The FDA regulated industry, and other stakeholders all use findings from methods research, such as that performed within IMEDS. FDA, which of course has the ultimate responsibility and authority for protecting the American public from unsafe medical products, uses these new methods to monitor the safety of the products it regulates. Industry, in turn, uses the methods to monitor safety of the drugs, vaccines, and other products it develops and manufactures. And then lastly, FDA, industry, and other stakeholders can also use these new methods for various purposes other than monitoring safety. Uh, just an example of that is to compare the effectiveness of two, uh, of two medical products. So in terms of exactly what IMEDS is, as I mentioned before, it's a program within the Reagan Udall Foundation that will help the FDA regulated industry, and clinicians improve patient care and the safety of medical products by focusing on three key areas. The first area, which is also the area of primary focus currently, is IMED's methods. And if you look at the triangle, that's what you see at the, at the top of that triangle. 
discussed here, and as I described in the previous slide, is where we facilitate methods research to develop new and better techniques to monitor the safety of marketed medical products. The outcome of this research will yield tools and approaches capable of taking large amounts of electronic health data and using it to improve public safety. But as you can probably imagine, this research is highly technical and, in fact, completely new to the broader scientific community. Um, therefore, uh, there are really only a handful of scientists in the entire world who have enough knowledge and expertise to make meaningful contributions to this particular area of research. We want to change that, and we certainly intend to do so through the second part of our program, which is the lower right-hand uh, uh, part of the triangle, which is IMED's education. Here, primarily through fellowships, we will train scientists and exactly how to conduct methods research using electronic healthcare data. Lastly, we want to expand the uses of the imported methods, tools, and approaches that we develop to areas beyond safety. As a result, we fully intend to use our research findings to help understand not only the risks, but also the benefits of marketed pharmaceutical products and devices. This is the third area of our program, or the, the left-hand side of the triangle that you see on the screen, and this area is called IMED's evaluation. Now, we recognize that many of you have heard a lot of uh, different organizations and programs that have been associated with IMED, uh, FNIH, or the Foundation for National Institutes of Health, of course, the OMOP program, many Sentinel, and I think it's really fair if you ask yourself the question, how will IMEDS be different from similar and existing programs? So we'll try to sort that out for you now. The idea for IMEDS was originally discussed several years ago when the FDA and industry agreed that there needed to be a public-private partnership to help advance the research methods that are used for monitoring the safety of marketed medical products. Now, you may know that there are a few ways that the FDA and pharmaceutical companies currently monitor the safety of those marketed products. One example of that is through the AIRS program, or Adverse Events Reporting System, where healthcare providers and companies report any incidents that they were notified about where a product is potentially unsafe. Later, two other programs were created after the signing of FDA 2007 or the FDA Amendments Act of 2007 to help improve safety monitoring. Uh, two of these programs, or these two programs in particular, are Mini Sentinel and OMA. Mini Sentinel, of course, is an initiative focused on the conduct of active medical safety product surveillance in supporting FDA's regulatory decisions. But stated more simply, many Sentinel conducts assessments to determine the safety of those marketed medical products. OMOP, on the other hand, is a separate initiative that has been and continues to be focused on the study of exactly how electronic healthcare data can be used to evaluate the safety of medical products. So if OMOP sounds familiar to what IMEDS is intended to do, that's frankly because it should. Until now, OMOP has been managed by the FNIH, but moving forward and as originally planned when OMOP was created, the program is in the process of transitioning to Reagan Udall. OMOP will therefore become a central component of the work IMEDS will conduct, which of course means that OMOP tools, assets, resources, and of course all the people associated uh, historically with OMA will continue to be leveraged and used within IMEDS. To give you an idea of what we've been doing from an operational perspective within IMEDS, uh, we'll now talk about some of the activities that have occurred over the last few months. First of all, IMEDS was effectively launched in the fourth quarter of 2012 uh, with the first tranche of funding being provided by the FDA. With these funds, a small team was hired to assist in what we call the design phase of IMEDS. Um, <clears throat> second, throughout the fourth quarter of 2012 and continuing through the early part of the second quarter of 2013, 
We were fully focused on that design phase for IMEDS. During this time, for example, the charter was created that defined the IMED's mission, the vision, and exactly how the program would be governed. The current version of the charter is actually available on the Reagan Udall uh, website, and if you'd like to uh, get an opportunity to review that, and, and we certainly have solicited uh, public comments on that charter and, and would welcome any comments that you have. Third, during the design phase, we also developed a comprehensive transition plan that laid out in great detail exactly how OMA would be transitioned to Reagan Udall in a seamless and efficient fashion to ensure that little or no disruption occurred with ongoing OMOP activities. Um, if I could ask uh, if there are other speakers on the line, if you could put your, your lights on, please. Yeah. Uh, yeah. background noise. Thank you. Um, more specifically, all legacy OMOP staff and most relevant contracts have already been formally transitioned to Reagan Udall. Uh, in addition, the virtual data lab, and uh, this is really where the OMOP scientists perform their research, and the OMOP website are in the process of being transitioned. Lastly, uh, with the formal approval of that transition by the FNIH board at the end of last month, uh, we're confident that the transition of OMOP to Reagan Udall will be concluded in the early third quarter of this year, which of course is right around the corner for us, which is slightly ahead of an already aggressive timeline. So at the end of the day, OMOP will be part of IMEDS operating within Reagan Udall. Many Sentinel will still exist and will continue to be used by the FDA to actively monitor the safety of marketed products. And the IMEDS and many Sentinel programs will work collaboratively and transparently to ensure the most robust, accurate methods are developed and used. It's also really important to note that IMEDS will offer the opportunity for all stakeholders uh, patients, regulated industry, foundations, government agencies, consumers, data partners, and others to fund its research and participate in its governance and research activities. This will be done as it has been done up to this point, and that's in a very transparent way, and will be made on a will be made available on a consistent basis to the general public through the IMED section of the Reagan Udall website. So we'd now like to be more specific regarding some of the tangible benefits uh, that we will experience with IMEDS. So we'll share a few concrete examples of these types of methods research that will be conducted by our IMEDS researchers. Note that uh, certainly these are only a few examples and are not in any way intended to be a comprehensive list. One major focus of IMEDS research will be to improve upon the existing tools and methods that are currently being used for safety surveillance, while at the same time creating new ones, of course, with the goal to advance the ability to identify potential product safety issues. As these data currently evolve and new types of data continue to become available for use, uh, evaluation and enhancements to current techniques, of course, are going to be crucial. A second focus area will support the FDA's public health mission by establishing standardized and empirically based best practices that can be directly applied within the Sentinel system, which of course Sentinel being a national resource. The stated and acknowledged goal of all stakeholders associated with IMEDS is to improve public safety and we believe our collaborative approach will certainly allow us to succeed in this endeavor. Another example of the IMED's work will be to seek to develop a better framework that can be used to help FDA and other researchers to know when observational electronic health data or are or are not, as the case may be, uh, appropriate to rule out false safety signals. The FDA currently uses the Sentinel system to explore safety concerns that have risen either from the literature or from voluntary reports. It's important to know when the Sentinel data are not appropriate to explore those concerns because of potential data limitations for the clinical situation. Lastly, uh, but, but certainly not least, 
IMEDS will continue to explore, evaluate, and enhance the use of common data models that support the use of electronic health data from disparate sources for the assessment of medical product safety and effectiveness. This will not only help the current use of the Sentinel system, but of course will also ultimately help others implement the tools and the techniques that are developed within their own data sets. Um, one, of the, one of the things that we were very fortunate to accomplish uh, recently, um, which has been approved by the Reagan Udall Board, was to appoint the IMED Steering Committee. And of course, this falls on the heels of the IMED's charter, which calls for the construct of a steering committee and also calls for the construct of the steering committee to assemble a scientific advisory committee. Uh, some of the, some of those, uh, some of you on this call um, certainly submitted nominations, and I believe one or two of you are actually on the IMED steering committee, so we appreciate you taking the opportunity to join. Um, you can read for yourself there, but I think it's important uh, to go through this list um, name by name because I have to say that we have been very fortunate enough to uh, be able to attract quite a stellar group of individuals that will help lead our efforts associated with IMEDs moving forward. Um, first of all, Marcus Wilson, who is president of Health Corps uh, and serving as the data partner representative on the committee. Uh, Marcus is also the IMED steering committee chair. Uh, helping Marcus to, uh, to lead the committee is Elizabeth Andrews, who's vice president of pharmacoepidemiology and risk management at RTI or Research Triangle Institute, and uh, Elizabeth uh, represents the Research and Academic Institute uh, 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 criteria. Next, Rob Califf, who's, who's Vice Chancellor for Clinical and Translational Research at Duke, who of course represents uh, providers and, and clinicians. Patrizia Cavazzoni, who's Senior Vice President for Worldwide Safety and Established Products uh, at Pfizer who's one of the two pharmaceutical industry representatives. Karen Mitten, who's director for the Center for Biologics Evaluation and Research, uh, also serving as one of the two FDA representatives. Jane Perlmutter, serving as our patient advocate representative and founder of Gemini Group. Uh, Mike Rosenblatt, who's executive VP and chief medical officer at Merck, serving as our second industry, pharmaceutical industry representative. Uh, John Santa, who is serving as our consumer advocate, and, and John is director of the Health Rating Center at Consumer Reports. And lastly, our second FDA representative, uh, Janet Woodcock, who is director for CEDAR, or Center for Drug Evaluation and Research. Uh, we're also in the process, uh, the Reagan Needall Board, that is, is in the process of selecting a board liaison who will also serve on the committee, but will serve in a non-voting capacity. So in summary, there are a number of features and benefits that will result from successful implementation of the IMEDS program. First, research findings, governance decisions, funding sources, and program activities will all be shared with the general public with full transparency. Um, late last month, for example, the reagan Udall Board decided on the composition of the IMEDS steering committee, which we just went over. Uh, that IMEDS uh, steering committee uh, is going to oversee the IMEDS research agenda, review potential partnerships and funding opportunities, and as I mentioned, nominate the IMED scientific advisory committee members, which we hope will happen later this month or early next month. We will post an announcement um, about the composition of the scientific advisory committee once that uh, committee has been established. Second, the IMEDS Research Laboratory will provide researchers with access to numerous and diverse data sources, increasing the quantity and quality of methods research. The OMOP Research Laboratory will be the starting point for the assets within and those policies guiding the IMEDS Research Laboratory. Third, there will be a number of opportunities to collaborate with data partners throughout a distributed data network. 
which will provide IMEDS researchers and stakeholders with an even broader opportunity to develop and evaluate methods that will be used for distributed data analyses currently used, uh, being used within the Sentinel system. Next, engagement with the diverse group of researchers will ensure that the most innovative and accurate methods are developed. Those participating in IMEDS research will be able to share best practices from one another, which obviously is going to have the ultimate benefit of increasing overall expertise in methods research and development across many organizations. And lastly, Reagan Udall's direct association with the FDA will ensure alignment between FDA's needs, which of course are related to short and long-term public health issues, and the research conducted within IMEDS. So in closing, uh, we encourage active and transparent participation from the public. We would urge you to go to the Reagan Udall website for more information on our charter, on which we're currently, as I mentioned before, receiving public comments. Um, certainly can get information uh, on OMOP specifically and some of our current activities by going to the OMOP website. We also respond to questions sent to imeds at reaganudall.org. Um, <clears throat> as we continue to make progress in some of the things that we've talked about today, for example, the IMEDS research agenda, that is currently under development and will continue to be under development uh, as we continue with the IMEDS steering committee and the scientific advisory committee. And as we make progress on that, we will post that on the website in the coming weeks. Lastly, uh, Reagan Udall will be hosting the OMOP Research Symposium on November the 5th and 6th, and we certainly encourage attendance for those of you who may wish to actively participate. So I want to really, on behalf of all my colleagues, uh, not only those associated directly with the IMETS program, but more broadly associated with uh, Reagan Udall, want to thank you very much for your time and attention this morning, and I will now um, uh, encourage questions to be sent through the chat line, and we'll answer those uh, either directly or I will call on some of my colleagues uh, who are uh, also closely involved with the IMEDS initiative. Um, so with that, I will, I believe some questions have been coming in. I will scroll up to um, to see if, if there are any cues. So bear with me for one moment. Um, here's one. Uh, will IMEDS address methods to manage the information on drug side effects, for example, that is increasingly available throughout Internet patient sites? And if so, how will IMEDS address this area? You know, we, we certainly will get information from a variety of sources. Those sources, uh, for the most part, initially will be coming through claims data uh, as well as electronic health records. Um, there, we certainly are aware that there is information associated with side effects that are becoming increasingly available through those uh, patient sites, and that is something that has been discussed. We, we certainly know the FDA are starting to use some of those tools, and we will, um, you know, we, we will certainly use all tools available to ensure that we have the most robust data sets to allow us to not only develop our methods as part of uh, IMEDS methods, but also to carry that further within the IMEDS evaluation program. Uh, next question. The White House is calling for all research supported by federal funds to make data use in publications publicly available. How will IMED support data availability? Well, certainly, as, uh, as I mentioned before, we are going to operate, we have already operated and will continue to do so in a very transparent way. Uh, so information that we generate as part of the IMEDS program will be, as I mentioned before, available on the Reagan Udall Foundation website within the IMEDS section. Uh, OMOP historically and IMEDS will certainly continue to, uh, to publish our findings 
uh, such that all stakeholders can have access to uh, the information and, and the research findings of the, the IMEDS program. Will, the next question is, will new research tools continue to be freely available to users? Uh, the short answer to that is yes. Um, we, again, will continue to operate in a very transparent way. We believe that having an inclusive research community will do nothing but help improve the research that's being done within IMEDS and, therefore, by definition, will improve the quality of the output um, once the research uh, continues. The next question is, will the OMOP servers be faster after transition to Reagan Udall? Uh, is, is the technical budget of IMEDS bigger than OMOP? Um, I, I certainly can't comment on the speed of the OMOP servers. Uh, what I can say is specifically regarding the budget, uh, we are uh, soliciting funding now <clears throat> on uh, with regard specifically to the IMEDS program and continuing the OMOP work uh, associated with the legacy OMOP research agenda for the remainder of 2013. Uh, we will also be putting in place a longer-term research agenda, as I mentioned before, that will take into consideration the specific needs of OMOP, of Sentinel, and other stakeholders group uh, to ensure that we do have appropriate funding to uh, support that long-term research agenda. I can't state today exactly what that uh, new budget will be because we haven't embarked on that next stage of the process. The next question is, will, will there be an initiative to standardize validated disease and outcome-specific ICD code sets? Um, I, I certainly can't answer that directly. Um, if uh, Greg Daniel from Brookings would like to comment on that, uh, the only thing that I would say is that we certainly will solicit uh, ideas for projects that would be an appropriate fit within IMEDS. And part of the responsibility that the Scientific Advisory Committee and more uh, broadly the IMED Steering Committee will have will be to evaluate those projects on a case-by-case -case basis uh, to determine whether or not they fit in terms of meeting the mission and vision of IMEDS. And then, of course, we have uh, to make the determination as to whether or not those programs can be adequately funded. I was about to ask if many of my, any of my colleagues uh, with the NIMEDS program had anything to add to that last question. Hi, Troy. This is Greg. Um, no, I thought that your, I, I thought that was a good uh, response and um, agreed with uh, that approach. So thank you. Okay. Thank you, Greg. The next question is the existing or perhaps a comment. The existing OMOP servers, uh, some queries take several hours to complete. I think that Again, goes back to a previous question. Uh, we certainly do understand and appreciate that uh, some of these things take longer uh, than uh, longer to complete than any of us would like, and that certainly is an area that we will explore moving forward from a from a technology standpoint. Uh, next question is: It was stated that the program will look at risks and benefits. The discussion today has been entirely about risks or safety. How will benefits side be addressed by this program? I think that's a, a very appropriate and, and good question. Uh, we are starting our research activities on the program really to continue uh, what has been done historically within both OMOP as well as many Sentinel, and that is in the area of safety surveillance. However, we do believe in the medium and long term that the methods that are developed as part of the program will ultimately be useful in areas outside of safety and specifically some of the benefits. Uh, whether or not those methods will be directly applicable or where additional research will perhaps need to take place, uh, we simply don't know that answer yet, uh, but it is part of our, uh, our vision for the program moving forward. Uh, frankly, the only reason that we're not doing it from the very outset is that we don't want to uh, try to uh, bite off more than we can chew, quite frankly, and engage in, um, well, uh, 
actually spread ourselves too thin such that we're not able to be successful in any of these aspects of, of research. But we do believe that, uh, that that is important. The next question is, from where is IMED soliciting funding? Um, for 2013, we have solicited funding from the same sources that uh, the Legacy OMOP program had solicited historically, and that is through regulated industry as well as from through pharma, the organization. Uh, that is what we've done for this year. However, uh, as we look to expand our long-term, really our medium and long-term research agenda, we are going to be soliciting funding from a broader base of, of uh, organizations. It will certainly, we envision that will certainly continue to be regulated industry to a certain extent, but we also want to open, uh, open the funding opportunities for, for other nonprofit organizations and from other areas outside of regulated industry, but still industry, uh, such as some of the org organizations who are engaged in very large data programs for which IMEDs uh, seemingly would be a very good fit. The next question is, will there be any discussion platform where IMEDs research can share knowledge? As OMOP users, I had a lot of questions that could also be answered by my fellow OMOP researchers in addition to annual meeting, for example, questions uh, in between the meetings. Yes, we certainly do uh, anticipate that there will be multiple venues by which uh, IMEDs research uh, will be, the, the results of the IMEDs research will be shared. Uh, some of those we've already talked about today, uh, but there certainly will be the OMOP uh, meeting later this year. And um, again, we'll continue to share information in a transparent way on the Reagan Udall website. We certainly would urge anybody who does have questions or comments or who would like to engage in dialogue, uh, please engage us through the IMEDs at Reagan Udall org uh, email address, and uh, and we'll certainly make sure that you have a platform for sharing your uh, uh, your um, areas of of concern or, or thoughts. Troy, can I, this is Emily, can I just add one, another answer to that? Please do. Hi, um, hi everyone, it's Emily Well, Bob. Um, I think some of you are on, 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 the, on the meeting today have been involved with, the, there's another venue, the statistical work group and the data management work group. So um, the statistical work group is a work group of users of various OMOP tools and, and methods and and uh, different uh, research investigators that they meet um, virtually over the web on the second Thursday of every month at 3 o'clock Eastern and talk about, you know, specific work or we have guest presentations talk about various statistical methods. And then our second work group is a data management work group, which meets on the first Thursday at 3 o'clock of every month. And that work group talks about building an environment um, for drug safety research using the, the various tools and the common data model and, um, and running different um, data quality tools, whether it's within an OMOP environment or uh, you've used OMOP tools in your own environment, um, which several of you I know on this call are on that work group. So if you would want to be part of that work group, you know, and, and add it to that distribution list and, and come as you like and, you know, um, learn lessons learned and share your experiences, that would be great. But um, you could just send, I guess, an email to the IMEDs at reaganudal.org, and then I'll update you on that distribution list. So it's either the data management work group, which is the first Thursday of every month, or this, and or if you want to do both, <laughs> the statistical work group is the second Thursday of every month, and they're both at 3 Eastern. So hopefully you guys can join. Thanks, Troy. Absolutely, and thank you for that additional information, Emily. Um, I am not seeing any additional questions coming through. Um, I'll give just a moment in case there are any last-minute uh, any last minute questions? So it looks like there are none. I certainly want to thank all of you for your interest in uh, IMEDs and Reagan Udall more broadly. Again, please stay tuned to the various uh, methods in which we will be communicating, and we look forward to sharing more information with you 